During PAX East 2019, a new Sword Art Online game was announced that goes by the name of Sword Art Online Alicization Licorice. Wanting to learn a bit more about this title, I did some digging, so we're going to be looking at some of the trailer details in this video, as well as some other bits of information given by Bandai Namco to start piecing together what we can expect from this new title. This is first and foremost a JRPG, developed by Akuria and published by Bandai Namco. Akuria is the developer responsible for a couple of the most popular Sword Art Online games made in the past, namely Hollow Fragment and Hollow Realization. They've also developed and released the Caligula Effect, but even though that's their most recent release, that's a game that is so different that it's gonna be too hard to compare to this. The most recent Sword Art Online game was Fatal Bullet, and this was quite a departure from the Hollow series, with it becoming a third-person shooter and all. Alicization and Licorice is, in a way, a return to the Hollow formula, with combat being less focused in ranged weapons and more focused in sword combat. Now, we don't have a lot of combat gameplay in the trailer, but what we do have allows us to start speculating about the type of game this will be. First, we have this shot of Kirito and Yujiro fighting the goblin boss, and we can see Kirito doing a three-hit combo, then pausing, then doing the same combo again. Looking back at Hollow Realization, it utilized an active time battle system, which is a type of combat that became very popular in Japan, as it is is often seen as a natural evolution of the turn-based battle system that dominated the genre. It's a combat system very reminiscent of old-school MMOs, where it's not really about focusing on combos, in fact, often characters will just attack automatically. The focus is on building your loadouts of special abilities and managing resources and cooldowns. And our next clip shows that even though Kirito is hitting Yu-Gi-Oh with his attacks, Yu-Gi-Oh is not flinching with every hit, which supports this theory. The combat system will most likely be an evolution of what was used in Hollow Realization but with a key difference that is very obvious already, and it's the fact that the camera is a lot more zoomed in in Elicization Licorice. The fact that the camera is so close to the action might be an indicator that this game won't be so heavy on team management aspects. In Hollow Realization, you could issue commands to your whole team, ask them to switch positions with you, ask them to throw special attacks, so your team became an integral part of the combat itself. But now, with the camera closer to the action, it's going to be a lot harder to keep an eye out on what your team is doing, and therefore, team management might not be as big of a deal this time around. In fact, we never see Kirito in a party with more than two people in this trailer. But this is all speculation. We won't really be able to get a better grasp of the combat until we get some proper gameplay with the user interface turned on. We're gonna need to see health bars, skill bars and damage numbers popping off to really understand how this is all going to work. But with these two little clips, it all seems to indicate that we're gonna see something similar to Hollow Realization. Next, I want to talk to you guys about the world. The words of Bandai Namco used to carefully describe the type of world in this game were an expansive world to explore. Expansive world and open world are not the same thing at all. Notice that the words open world were not used at all, and that's probably because this is not an open world. Once again, the comparison to Hollow Realization might just be the most accurate here. The camera pans showing you the Star Village are very reminiscent of Hollow Realization when this previous game introduced you to a brand new area. We also see Kirito and Yu-Gi-Oh running around in the world in what seems like a very slow running animation that is definitely not built for exploring an open world. I believe what we're seeing in this trailer is a social area, which is the village, similar to the town of beginnings in the previous game, from where you will travel to different locations, each one of these with a few nooks and crannies to explore, and perhaps a couple of new items and treasure chests to find, but these areas will be somewhat linear, and not really something that should be considered an open world. In fact, looking at the little snippets in this trailer, it doesn't even look as open as Fatal Bullet, which was, to be fair, quite open, but I still would not consider that an open world on its own. We're probably gonna see this type of hub world with linear paths, restricted areas, where exploration won't really be the focus of this game, but rather its JRPG elements that we mentioned before. Finally, we arrive at the story portion of this game, and I'm gonna do my best not to give you any spoilers for Elicization, even though the trailer does spoil a lot. Many of the events depicted in the trailer don't happen until later in the anime, and the the show is quite recent. In fact, part 1 just ended, and part 2 is only coming out in October later this year, so it's definitely too soon to start throwing spoilers around, but uh, when I make the next video on this game, I won't be holding back, so if you're worried, I'd probably get to watching. It doesn't seem like Bandai is concerned about 
spoilers either. So you might just get spoiled. So if you're interested in watching the show, I would do it probably sooner rather than later, because the next trailer might just spoil everything for you. But story-wise, this game is a big departure from the previous Sword Art Online titles. This time, it's a linear story that is played from Kirito's perspective. Usually, Sword Art Online games let you create your own character and either play an alternate story or try to fit your character into the original story somehow. And that's just not the case with Elicization Licorice. In a way, it feels like a more traditional anime game where you play as the protagonist through the story you've already watched in the anime. And if you have not watched Elicization yet, well, one, there is plenty of time until this game comes out, and two, you probably don't need to. As long as you know the basic concepts of Sword Art Online and what VR MMOs are, the story of Elicization, even though it's a direct sequel to the previous Sword Art Online arcs, the technology behind this new set is a complete departure from what Kirito has used previously. The story that develops inside the virtual world is pretty self-contained, so even if you're a stranger to this new season, you'll still get most out of it, if not all, by jumping straight into Elicization. That said, there's a lot that happens in the real world, outside the virtual world in the anime, which personally, those are probably the most interesting parts of the story for me. Though it is unclear whether there will be any gameplay outside of the virtual world. The game's description does seem to be focused primarily on exploring the latest VR MMO, but I can't imagine the real world won't at least show up in cutscenes or referenced through dialogue. Otherwise, all of your actions inside the virtual reality will lose a lot of their weight. And that's gonna do it for our first look at Sword Art Online Elicization Licorice. There's no release date yet, not even a year, but we do know that the Elicization anime will return on October 2019. So I personally would not expect the game before then. Maybe it's only coming out in 2020, who knows? But as always, thank you very much for watching. My name's Globku, and I'll see you guys next time. Boy.